everyone, and welcome back to the Cabral Concept. I'm Stephen Cabral, board certified naturopathic doctor. Thank you so much for once again joining me this weekend on our Cabral House Calls. This is where I get my opportunity to try to give back as much as I can and share with you a lot of the things that I work on in my private practice, which all revolve around wellness, weight loss, and anti aging. We talk a lot about nutrition, we talk about supplementation. We talk a little bit about the you know disease pathology-based process, not to diagnose disease, but really look at where do diseases originate. And when I say the word dis-ease or disease as we know it typically, I mean a dis-ease of the body. I mean some type of the body or some part of the body is not functioning as it should be. And typically, it's not functioning as it should be because it's out of balance in some way. And that balance can come from maybe a micronutrient deficiency, such as a B vitamin or it could be vitamin C, or it could be selenium, or chromium for the blood sugar. could be any number of things, okay? We can look at micronutrient deficiencies. We can look at gut-based issues, whether it's gut permeability, where you're having food sensitivities leak into the bloodstream, such as proteins. We could be looking at food sensitivities in general, and those food sensitivities could be fermentable foods, or maybe it's lectins, or maybe it's nightshades, or any one of those things. We can also look at SIBO, or bacterial overgrowth in the gut, or candida overgrowth. We can look at heavy metal toxicity load. We can look at neurotransmitter deficiency or maybe like overmethylation or too much neurotransmitter-based production. So we can look at all of these things. And there are literally dozens more to look at when we're assessing the human body. So my job is to essentially take all these questions that come in to the best of my ability and really steer you in the right direction as to where you should get started. Now, maybe that's with lifestyle-based changes or mental health-based changes as well. Maybe it's with taking a lab test or you know, really just walking down that next step, right? Taking that next step towards greater health, fitness, wellness, and really getting you to enjoy the life you love. That's what it's all about. So I want to get right into it today. We've got a bunch of questions as always. Okay, so now let's get right into that first question. The first question is from Ruben. Ruben is asking, first of all, thank you for putting in the time to put out your podcast on a regular basis. I wasn't sure what to address to reach out with my question, so I figured I would start with this one. The question is actually from my wife. She had an annual exam yesterday, and cholesterol came back high. The doctor prescribed her a low-dose statin. My wife has been really sad since then because she really watches what she eats and is active. Here's a brief overview. All right, so Ruben goes on to list all of the blood work that his wife had done and then go over previous cholesterol from many years before that. And then he goes on to say, she does not want to start taking a statin, but feels defeated. I'm reaching out to see if there are other tests to do to see what's actually causing the high cholesterol. Also, if she can do anything or any of your protocols for um, any of the daily support products, any info that you give us to help in the near future would be really appreciated. Kind regards, Ruben. All right. So Ruben, the one thing I can't do on house calls is actually do individual cases. So I'm not actually able to review all the numbers. Of course, if you work with our health coaches or if you do an annual blood lab review with me, I'm happy to do that. My philosophy is this. I don't look at the numbers as you. That's the truth. And so I'm not trying to back my way out of it or anything like that. But you know, basically, there's two truths. One is that it's not essentially fair to all the people I do consultations with my practice. Um, but that isn't even the reason because I'm not trying to promote that. But the second is this. I don't even get into lab tests. I don't even talk about it until the second consultation because I need to know more about the person. And that's the truth meaning that you are not your numbers. You're not just your lab test. You are your story that you're coming to me or my health coaches with, and you're your diagnose-based numbers. So we look at both. They're both equally important, but I would hate to just you know start to work on these numbers or treat these numbers and not necessarily the person themselves. However, what I can tell you is that there's not a person alive that I've seen in my practice where we're not able to better rebalance the body so that the cholesterol comes down within a healthy range. Now, remember, notice I did not say I am treating high cholesterol. What I work on is the person and their underlying root causes. So Ruben, no different. We can help your wife as well. What I would recommend is actually looking at a few things. We want to look at her inflammation. So we'd like to look at her omega-3 test. We would love to look at a here tissue mineral analysis if possible, just to just disregard if there's no extra heavy metals or higher stress-based patterns or anything like that. I would love to see a thyroid adrenal hormone panel since weakened levels of thyroid or increased levels of cholesterol, increased levels of cortisol could also affect cholesterol as well. 
A couple of things would be potentially looking at running a DNA genetic-based report that would show if your wife is a ApoE blood gene type for a 3-4 or 4-4, or even a 2-4, but usually those offset each other. Very, very rare to have that as well, a tiny fraction of the population. So then in her particular case, then even eating well, and I have that in air quotes, wouldn't necessarily help her if she's eating a lot of cholesterol in her diet. Now, again, that's for a small subset of the population, but still, it does matter. So what I'm saying is there's always a way. You can always figure it out. What I would absolutely do is before she has her blood work done again for her cholesterol, I personally would recommend doing the Dr. Rawl detox for 21 days. Then as you're basically finishing that, have the blood work done again because on that nutrition plan, it will help to rebalance inflammation, blood sugar levels, all sorts of things going on. But even if you just start with one lab room, and like even if you just did one, you're going to get a lot of our, our personal recommendations. And then remember, there are natural-based protocols instead of using a statin, meaning that even if you have high cholesterol, you can look into all the things that we do for high cholesterol as well. Again, run the lab first, but then we use great products that have red yeast rice, that have omega-3 support would be another great one, that all of these things can work. And believe it or not, a statin actually is derived from a form of red yeast rice as well. So again, we prefer to use those, but if your wife goes on a statin, I've done many shows in cholesterol, you should be taking some really good form of 100 milligrams of ubiquinol per day. Okay, so let's move on. And then of course, we need your vitamin D tested, but that's on your thyroid hormone adrenal. I could talk about this all day, so I'm going to move on to the next question. All right, Brian is up next. Hi, Dr. Wall. Thank you so much for providing us with such amazing content and inspiring many to live happier, healthier, and healthier lives. Okay. We've got a couple of happy years in there. I listen to your podcast daily and, and you've been providing me with knowledge I've always wanted to know while growing up. I have a little story for you. As For as long as I can remember, I've been in excruciating pain 24-7, especially in the morning. I've been diagnosed with lactose intolerance as a baby. It wasn't until 11 that doctors diagnosed me with celiac, then depression, anxiety, acid reflux, then anemia. My symptoms never went away. My intestines never fully recuperated and I was taking five different pills for 12 years old. Okay, I'm going to skip down a little bit in the question because it's very long. And so um, everyone though, everyone, go to stephencabral.com forward slash and today's show is 771. So just go to stephencabral.com forward slash 771 and you can find all of Brianna's question. Okay, so basically she goes on to say that her intestines weren't fully recuperated. She started training for a bodybuilding competition. She did her first show in April and placed second, which is fantastic. Her diet wasn't too bad, but she did a lot of cardio. And then three months later, prepping for her next show, she went on a diet that lasted 12 weeks, struggled to lose weight, lots of cardio every day, lots of weight training every day, only ate carbs every once in a while, finding out, trying to figure out how she survived. She started having hormone-based dysregulation. She's worried about how she lowered her metabolism, her thyroid, how she increased her cortisol, burned off a lot of muscle. So then she essentially goes on to, should I be taking certain supplements? I recently started implementing your morning protocol of water, yoga, smoothie, greens, definitely feeling better. Can you help me? I'm so lost and I know you're the best and you're the only person I trust answering this properly as you always look at all perspectives. Okay. So Brianna, this is how we fix this because I work with many, many uh, female figure competitors and many, many female models and actresses and everyone in general, you know, literally. And here's the deal. Women, I actually just had this conversation, literally just had this conversation today with a private wellness client. And she is an athlete. The problem is she's training for a marathon. Okay. So she's running 10 to 12 miles per day. She has Hashimoto's. We retested all of her levels. Her TPO antibodies became way down, meaning like her body's no longer attacking her thyroid anymore, which is great. And the reason why it's great is that her autoimmune issue no longer exists. Well, how do we do that? Well, she also had SIBO and she had gut-based issues like candida, et cetera, et cetera. So we we fixed her gut. We sealed that up. She's no longer having the food. We tested her food sensitivities. We removed her food sensitivities, which is always a great thing to do. But here's the deal. And I can always share with you exactly what's happened in my practice. Her TSH only came down a little. So it's, it's still too high. Why is it too high? Well, her cortisol levels are still too high. And because of that, it's actually lowering her thyroid. So she's still producing a great amount of stress, stress from life, stress from being a type A personality, which again, nothing wrong with that, but you have to know how to turn it off. And she's waking up around 4.30 in the morning in order to go for a 10 to 12 mile run five plus days a week. 
I let her know. I said, you can do two things. One, you can train for this marathon and be great and do it in under three hours and any of the other goals you have. Okay, great. Or we can fix your thyroid completely. Now, she said, okay, it's always been a goal of mine. I qualified for this really large marathon and I want to complete it. I said, okay, good. When is the marathon? She said, November. I said, okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to support your body until November. I'm going to keep trying to work with you to calm the cortisol levels, especially after the workout. We put on a special diet where she's going to have a little bit more carbs after her workout, but maybe not as much at night because she's an endomorph body type with some mesomorph in there as well. We're going to modulate some of the running because she's trying to peak way too soon in a marathon. So we're bringing that way down and not trying to then ramp up her training until 12 weeks before her marathon because she's already in great shape. And then we're going to give her some advanced thyroid-based products. She's using the daily thyroid support. And we're also having to now use the Adrenal Soothe, calmer cortisol levels, a couple other things at night, such as CBD and our deep sleep protocol to get her into a longer, deeper sleep and try not to get her up at 4.30 a.m. as much anymore. So that will be to maintain her body. And, and again, we very well could lower her TSH by that time. We've already gotten rid of that Hashimoto's, so now we're working on that. But after she finishes the marathon, that's when I said, that's when we're going to get your hormone system and endocrine system back to normal. So why did I just share that story with you? Brianna, and the reason is this, is that you, and along with a lot of other people, have to decide what is your life going to be? Because bodybuilding and figure competitor, being a figure competitor, isn't always conducive to the best health. And the problem is if we just deplete all these carbs in general, well, we also don't feed our microbiome. Meaning a lot of people don't know that fat and protein does not feed the good gut bacteria, okay? Only carbohydrates do in certain types of carbs. So here's the other issue. That affects then mood. It affects anxiety. You had anxiety and depression, all these things at a younger age, most likely, and mineral deficiency and anemia because one with celiac, you're, you have a lot of internal bleeding. It's microscopic, but you still have internal bleeding because of the inflammation. The second is that you're not absorbing your nutrients. So I can't recommend enough using the daily nutritional support supplement once to twice a day. Of course, you're doing the whole Dr. Ball daily protocol, but the, the truth is this, is that you really do need to run the thyroid adrenal hormone panel. In my opinion, I'm giving you my opinion. If you were in my practice, this is the one test that I would recommend. And the second test I would recommend is the organic acids test, just to see how your gut is functioning as well. I gave the same advice to the private wellness client, concierge client that I was just talking about. I'm giving you that same exact advice right now. All of this is healable. Everything everyone's dealing with is healable. It honestly is. I would not tell you that if it was not. I haven't seen anything yet in my practice that you cannot heal if you're truly willing... Because remember, it's not all about supplements. It's not, all right? It's about nutrition. It's about sleep. It's about de-stressing. It's about relationships. It's about everything in life. And you just have to find out, what are my weak spots and how can I bring those up a little bit? That's it. They don't have to be perfect. They don't. But they can't be dragging on you so much that it's not allowing you to get well, all right? And keep checking for in for new Cabral concepts because I do talk about these items literally every single week. All right. Great question though. A man is up next. Hi, Dr. Ball. I've been listening to your show for over a year and absolutely love it. I receive more knowledge from you to help my clients than most other resources. My question is about my current private client I'm working with. She's 65, had two heart attacks the last one two years ago. She's on about 12 different medications. And my question is, she's open to change. And what would be the first thing to do since she would love to get off a lot of these medications? Okay. So here's the issue. What I would recommend for most people is the Dr. Cabral Daily Protocol. That is your daily nutritional support shake. Why is it called the Dr. Cabral Daily Protocol? It's because it's what I use every day in my practice. And if someone comes to my practice and they're using six supplements or eight supplements, whatever it might be, well, after we get the body balanced, they're essentially only on the Dr. Cabral Daily Protocol, which is the multivitamin that's included with your powder every day with the minerals and the protein that's called the Daily Nutritional Support Powder. The second one is 22 organic fruits and vegetables because the truth is this, no one no one in the world is going to eat 22 organic fruits and vegetables a day. It's just, it's very expensive to get that much and it's very hard to consume that much. And it's also a lot of roughage, right? So what this is, it's 22 organic fruits and vegetables that have been juiced, dehydrated, put into powdered form and easy for you to digest. And it costs less than $2 per serving to get 22 of those. So pretty simple. And the last one is um, the daily probiotic support, probiotic support. And that's 50 billion live dairy-free probiotics. And why is it called the Dr. Ball Daily Protocol as well? Because I do it every day in the morning as well. This allows me to get the best of functional medicine. That's the daily nutritional support powder. 
and the best of whole food nutrition, and that's the daily fruit and vegetable blend powder. That's the 22 organic greens and reds because it's fruits and vegetables. And then the probiotics for my gut because my gut doesn't take a day off, and so it always needs that good bacteria. A lot of people forget that the bacteria in your gut microbiome is transient. It's always moving, it's moving in, it's moving out, and it's changing based on seasons and the foods we eat. So I just do a little bit, give it a little bit of help, right? There's a hundred trillion of those guys down there. I'd give it 50 billion a day, a little, a little buffer. That's basically what I do. So that's where to start. The other thing that I recommend for everyone in my practice, if you're not maintaining a tan, then you want to use vitamin D. Okay, we have something called the liquid vitamin D3 drops. One bottle, literally one bottle, lasts you an entire year. So it's a phenomenal deal. Why do we do that? Well, the truth is that most people need to be taking vitamin D. Most people are deficient in vitamin D. And the ratio is not 30 to 100. The ideal is 50 to 70 nanograms per milliliter. So of course, have your vitamin D tested. I will link up how to do that in the show notes. But that's very, very important. And that comes with our thyroid adrenal hormone test, just to let people know not to double up. Again, I can't even recommend an omega-3. A lot of times I would do that. The reason I wouldn't with her is, I don't know if she's on blood thinners. I don't know what's going on with your client. So I would first start with the Dr. Ball Daily Protocol, okay, that's going to clean up breakfast because it's an entire breakfast. The next thing I'm going to do is have her get into exercise. Then I'm going to have her do sauna up to her ability. I'm going to get her on a plant-based diet, okay, a plant-based diet, which means predominantly fruits and vegetables. The fruit can be lower glycemic if she has any type of weight-based issues or blood sugar issues. And then I'll have her do things like Epsom salts, get up to 10,000 steps per day, all the lifestyle-based things that I'll be chatting about in my upcoming book. And then as she's getting healthier and her numbers are rebalancing, that's when I would then have her work with her PCP to wean her off of her medication one by one, very slowly, never stopping it right away, cold turkey, typically weaning off. But that's for her and her PCP to decide because I cannot give pharmaceutical-based advice, nor would I. Okay, Judy's up next. Judy's asking, Hi, Dr. Brawl. Just finished your podcast, 713, on body types, and I have a follow-up question. I'm currently on week two of your detox, and I've suffered for over a decade with adrenal fatigue and hypothyroidism. Therefore, I have metabolism issues that I didn't always have at a young age. When determining my body type, what should I consider my current state or when I, as a kid, with no health issues? Okay, Really great question. I've actually chatted about this a couple times. Your genotype, your body type, your dosha never changes. It never changes. Your genetics are your genetics in Ayurveda, your dosha, your genotype, it's always the same. Okay. What changes then is who you've become. Okay. That's your phenotype or your Vakriti. And what does that mean? Okay. Here's what it means. It means like, let's say we have two identical twins, same exact genetics. Okay. They're identical twins. And they were separated, let's say, at birth. They've actually had a number of these studies. One of them weighs 250 pounds. Let's say they're both 5'10". And one of them weighs 160 pounds. Okay. So we can say, how did one of these bodies, let's just say they're both a mesomorph body type. How did one become 250 pounds or so? Well, that what happened was they got too far away from their natural genetics, right? Maybe they had the low thyroid. Maybe they had diabetes. Or maybe they had something which lends itself to weight gain. Now, is all of that fixable? Of course it is. Absolutely. But here's the deal. What we're looking at is that we have to deal with your current state. So in Ayurveda, they say the same exact thing. Work on your current state while understanding your genetics of who you are. And that's why even when I have people run genetic tests, which I do, and I love genetic testing, I think it's amazing, your genetics honestly don't matter until you get your body balanced. Now, you can say, oh, that's not true because I have this MTHFR gene mutation, I have this SOD mutation, I have this COMT, and I have this cytochrome P450, and et cetera. I understand that. I know what you're saying. But the truth is that most of those things can be, they can just kind of hide in the background if you get a lot of these major, the big rocks, right? If you take care of those, then a lot of these things within our genetic code, they don't have as much of an aggravating factor on our body. I found that out for myself as well, because I have quite a, a number of uh, gene mutations that was passed down, not just from mother and father, but ancestral as well. So all of those have been now in the background, meaning like I don't have all of these other issues that are there. Now, do I have to be aware of them? Of course I do. So what do you have to do for you? Well, you need to fix your adrenal fatigue and hypothyroidism. The number one test to run for that, very straightforward, very simple, is run the thyroid hormone adrenal. Once you run that lab test, if you can, I would run that lab test and I would also run the organic acids test. And if you're able to, the hair tissue mineral analysis, okay? Now, of course, the big five is always what I recommend, which are those three plus the food test plus the omega-3 test. But I gave you that in my order of importance. Thyroid hormonal adrenal first, 
then the organic acids test, then the hair tissue mineral analysis. Of course, if you go to stephencabral.com forward slash 771, all of those will be linked up. All right, that's what I would do. When those lab tests come into our office after you've run them, I read them over, I give my recommendations, and then you get on the call with one of my health coaches to take you through exactly what to do. That's what I'm recommending because you know adrenal fatigue and hypothyroidism, they would need to be worked on simultaneously. And you don't want to just stimulate the adrenals because that will give you short-term energy, but just make you worse in the long run. So what you want to do is you actually want to nourish the adrenals while calming the HPA axis, which is the hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis. And in your case, the hypothalamus pituitary adrenal thyroid axis. This gets complicated, but I did a whole show on this, how your adrenals affect your thyroid. So check that out. Just go to stephencabral.com forward slash podcast for more information on that. And um, that will definitely get you on your way. Let's do one more quick question. It's from Judy. Hi, Dr. Ball. In your podcast, you mentioned the importance of a cheat meal once a week for ghrelin and leptin levels. I have a hard time resisting cravings once I cheat. I'm on week two of your detox and no longer crave any bad foods. I worry I will go downhill once I allow myself the bad foods. What do you recommend to do to prevent a relapse? Are there better cheat foods to stick with which address ghrelin and leptin and avoid a relapse? What about portion sizes for cheat meals? Okay, Judy, great question. By the way, I just want to throw this out there. I've never said that you need to eat bad foods. I've never said that, which again, it could be implied that way or inferred. So what I say is this, is that I enjoy a cheat meal once a week of pasta and usually bread. Now, if you have celiac, you're not going to have pasta and bread. That would make sense, right? I still stay away from dairy for the most part. Not that anything will happen violently, but it's a slippery slope for myself, meaning that I can get sinus congestion and inflammation, just like no digestive issues. But what happens is that next day, that IgG food sensitivity, you know, it's, it's, it's a bad, bad place for me to get into. So I just refrain. So here's the thing, Judy, you don't need to cheat with poor foods. Now, you saw you're on the Dr. Ball Detox right now. You're on week two of probably the 21-day Dr. Ball Detox. And that's what happens. Food cravings go away. You sleep better, moods better, you feel more level, you have less joint pain, you're happier, all of those things. And why? Like, is it a miracle? No. What happens is, well, I mean, it looks like that and actually it feels that way, but here's the deal. What you're doing is you're re-regulating all of your systems to create a homeostasis in the body. Equilibrium is what we call it. So here's what happens. Blood sugar now becomes leveled. And that takes maybe four days for most people, five days for some. And then we're leveling out blood sugar and inflammation and hormones and all those things until you feel good. So I don't want you to throw that off. So here's what you can do. If you don't want a cheat meal, meaning like bad foods, right? Processed foods. By bad, we mean processed breads and pastas and pastries and cookies and dessert, okay? What you can do is just have more carbohydrates. So what does that mean? Well, you can have two or three or four cups of squash and sweet potatoes, or you can have fruit. All a cheat meal means is this. It just means more carbohydrates. And usually it means processed foods. Now, if it's not a cheat meal, meaning bad processed foods, all we're going to call it is actually called a reloading meal or a refueling meal. And it just means more carbs. It's not bad for you. Okay, here's what it means. It means that you're restoring liver glycogen levels, that you're restoring muscle glycogen levels, that you're allowing your body to understand that it is not in a famine-based state. And it works extremely well for the sarcoplasm, for you know filling up those muscles. And it works great for energy and getting the brain more glucose if needed. So you don't have to do this. Again, this works extremely well for endomorphic body types just once a week. And for those that are trying to stick with a weight loss program at plateau often. So again, hopefully that helps. You can, again, yams and squash and fruit, whatever you'd like. Just one meal, pick the day and have two, three cups, whatever you would like. Just feel satisfied. You don't want to gorge yourself, but just feel satisfied. And then after that, you're all done. You get back on track. This should allow you to really uh, not only feel satisfied and be able to go another another week, and that's why I do it too. Then it allows me to go another week after having the foods that I crave without having that crash. The crash comes for some people when they're still dealing with blood sugar-based issues and they get high, meaning high blood sugar off of those foods and then crash that next day and their body just wants more of the carbs to feed it. Now, the last part would be if someone has candida overgrowth and they eat those carbs, well, they start to feed that candida again. This is something to look into. That's totally different. It actually just popped into my mind. That's when you want to run an organic acids test. It's really the only true test, the best test for running that to look for fungal overgrowth, yeast overgrowth. Because again, I did a podcast called Why Candida Diets Don't Work. And the reason is they don't work alone because it just starts to grow back because you haven't changed the 
the ratio and the population and the microbiome. So run the organic acids test if needed. If you have that fungal overgrowth, well, we'll fix that. You know, We'll do the candida and bacterial overgrowth protocol, and then we'll start to rebuild that gut. Hopefully that helps. Really great questions today. Actually, I very much enjoyed answering everyone's questions today. A lot of different topics. And as always, we'll be back tomorrow. So tomorrow I am answering more of our community's questions. I hope you stay tuned. And if this show is helpful, please do feel free to pass along to someone else you believe it may serve. Once again, thank you so much for tuning into the Cabral Concept. As a valued listener this month, I want to bring you a special offer that I've never done before. Since I'm now such a big believer in CBD oil and the hundreds of benefits that it can bring you, I wanted to give you the opportunity to try it out for yourself. We have so many success stories coming in from those using our organically grown CBD oil that I wanted to make sure you get those same benefits yourself. So if you or someone you know suffers from anxiety, depression, insomnia, feelings of overwhelm, learning disabilities, autoimmune issues, blood sugar dysregulation, poor skin health, or inflammatory health imbalances, I can't recommend enough giving full strength CBD oil a try. When your bottle arrives, simply place one full dropper under your tongue and hold it there for two minutes and then swallow any remaining CBD oils. You can always increase the dosage from one full dropper after that since there's no upper limit if you choose to increase the desired effect. The benefits are quick and usually come within 20 minutes while lasting hours after that. And the Equilibrium Nutrition brand, our CBD oil, is also one of the only full-spectrum CBD oils that's third-party tested and clinically proven to be free of bacteria, molds, and other contaminants. It's also been tested for THC and proven to be non-psychoactive while passing all standard measures. Plus, we're one of the only, if not the only, company to actually post our certificate of analysis and authenticity right on our CBD oil webpage. So if you're looking for the highest quality CBD oil in the world that you can trust for yourself and your family, look no further. This month, I'm offering a buy three, get one free, which saves you over $89 plus free shipping so that you can truly experience the healing power of this plant-based medicine. To take advantage of this offer while supplies last, go to stevencabral.com forward slash store. And there at the top of the webpage, you will see a button to click for this exclusive offer. I hope you're able to take advantage of this offer It's a special one-time offer, and I can't wait to hear your success story soon.